Howdy fans and backers. Uh, Chris Spears here from Shroud of the Avatar team. Just gonna show off a few of the features for our 10. I actually made one of these videos for release eight and did it with zero effort. Just played the game for 20 minutes or so, thinking that 100 people would watch it and I think it was uh, like 11,000 views. So uh, I'll try to do it equally as bad a job with this one since that was so popular last time. Gotta do it in one take, as always. Here we are in our character creation, lots of new stuff here. If you haven't played since release eight is when I think we added this, the new character creation stuff. I'm gonna show off female, show off a few more features. Fortunately, my Chris name works for male and female. Uh, let's see, go into here. One of our new features we have is, well, when you've got the bigger screen, See what the hair is doing there? Ooh, look at the shake, the shimmer. Got a new hair shader going on. Uh, in addition to that, we also have movement in the hair. Uh, so, as you can see the hair moves and jitters with it there. All right, next up, come over here. We still have uh, all the stuff we had for release eight. We've added a bunch of new things. If you, have, if you haven't played with it since release seven, we switched away from the fixed heads to everything we're doing is through morph targets now. So we have one head and then you can actually tweak individual little elements of it. So you can see here, which of course will result in some ugly avatars if that's the direction you go. Uh, but it's super customizable and we let you do what you want to with your characters now. Change up noses, cheeks. We'll continue adding these elements as well over time, just as we have time to get things in. We added four or five new ones for this release. Let's see, let's see if I can get the elf ears going on. I think that's about as close as I can get to elf ears. And cheeks. Uh, Do too much crazy with that. Jaw strength. Let's see if we can get the. Uh, there's the, the Jay Leno. Doesn't look so good on women. I think I'll pull that in a little bit. All right. So there's what I'm going with today. And into the game we go. Yes, play. Uh, I will probably cut through a few scenes. The load times on them. We actually did quite a bit of load time optimization this release. Loading towns is still fairly slow, but uh, scenes should be much quicker. Uh, towns are slow, just we haven't done much to optimize the loading of player houses, uh, and probably won't for a little while. And whoops, I got quality set to minimal here. Change that over. Go on up to fantastic. Uh, if you're not familiar with the game, you can also go and look. Uh, there's a lot of options here. You can change how your controls are mapped, or if you forget what the key is for a control, come over here to find it. Uh, some game options in here as well. Feel free to come play with them, experiment with things. We start players in Braemar now. And as you can see, there's a couple of teleporters over there. Uh, those are really for convenience. Those obviously won't be in the final game. We just have them there to make things a little bit easier for you. There's also a tour guide there who is uh, part of a new thing that we're going to start doing in each of these pre-releases, which is we now have the ability to save out the flags permanently on your account rather than on your character. So we will continue to wipe your characters for at least another few releases. Uh, but things that you do will be able to be saved. So for this one, we're adding a tour that if you basically go uh, tour the continent, find the new stuff, then you can get a flag that will give you a reward when the final game comes out. Only people who played in this release will get. Uh, I forget if we've announced what it is, but I think it'll be some type of hat. Uh, for those who are not too familiar with the game, you can actually see the sun very slowly is moving there. Our time, our days are uh, about an hour long. Uh, and I wanna get out and see a bunch of stuff before it gets night. So I'm gonna hurry along here. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, for those, before I go head out to other places, PvP is still in the game. There's the team play, there's single or uh, open play PvP arenas. There are also 
there's now a spectator mode that was added. Oh, before I head out, I should probably check out my equipment. It uh, looks like Troll Hunter's going to be joining me today. I think that is uh, Finn from the team, if anybody's familiar with team members. There's my character, my inventory. Looks like I got decent starting gear. We just changed out some of that stuff. Give you a little more starting gear. Pull up my current decks. It looks like we still... Okay, so we've changed up how the decks work. What we start we are starting with, we're actually starting with some locked decks. We realized that was one thing we were doing that's confusing people is we were starting everybody with a kind of an expert mode deck. So this is a deck that will play very much like a normal MMO, and we're making that the default now, which is it's just a locked deck with uh, timers on it that you can use and uh, hopefully will be a little less confusing for people. So we start you with that. Another thing we've done is we now have the concept of an alternate. For instance, let me lock the caster, or uh, lock, use the lock swords equipped and the lock caster as the alternate. So now, if I'm in combat mode and I hit X, it'll auto switch over to the caster. And that's Z to uh, go into combat mode, draw weapons, come back out, Z to re-enter, and X to enter combat mode. And let's see, let me get back to the deck there. So some of the other improvements, we did not add many skills for this release. I had hoped we would, but really we focused on making what we have better. We're still missing a few particle effects and sound effects and those type things, but uh, we'll continue to add those. Hopefully we'll get some more skills in each release and fill out a few more trees. So we have the concept now of a auto deck, which is just a deck that we make from every single item that you or skill that you have. Uh, this will probably not be your best option. This is using the uh, the card system, the deck system, where they deal out. And with 69 glyphs in your deck, it's going to be crazy, and you'll have a tough time remembering what uh, what cards you have and what each one does. Much better to get a small focus one like some of these down here where there's 20. Uh, for those who don't know much about it, that is 20 glyphs is kind of the mid-range. As you get higher level, that number will actually go up and your minimum number of glyphs will be around 30. And in case you're not familiar with this system, it is actually a card system where you build out the cards from skills. So you get skills and then you can use the skills that give you cards. We, we refer to them as glyphs. Uh, the are over here and they will get dealt out at random. With each deck that you build out, you can also set your linked equipment. So this is equipment that is linked to that deck, so when you switch to that deck, it'll pull out this equipment. The reason we do that is there's a lot of skills like blades and heavy armor, light armor, that are only usable when you have the appropriate things equipped. So for instance, I'm wearing uh, light armor right now. So you can see if I go over to the heavy armor tree that it's saying required equipment heavy armor, I don't have that. Uh, so I can't use that. So that's why you tie, you, you link your equipment to decks. So when you swap, it swaps out the correct equipment for you. If you look down here, you will see that there is also, uh, these are the buttons that I'll have available. There's one that is locked. That comes from the focus tree. If you look over here on Idetic Memory. Uh, each level that you put in that gives you one extra level, one extra button that you can lock. Uh, the lock cards work a little bit differently and that they have a cooldown timer. Technically, all abilities have cooldown timers, or almost all. If you are using the dealt system, though, they get dealt out when you use them, they vanish, and they go into a pool that will then be used once the cooldown timer gets used, it gets put back into the available cards. So they all have cooldown timers, it's just more obvious with cards that are locked. Uh, that's one of the advantages if you have a deck system, you're using the deck system and you have one, two, three, four knockdowns, you could have two or three knockdowns out at a time and they don't share cooldown times. So you can use one after another after another with only a slight pause in between. A lot of skills we have, uh, they have the concept of locked time uh, and casting time. So you can have some things that when you cast them, they, they trigger instantly. A lot of the combat abilities are that type of skill, so they actually trigger the second you touch the button. 
and then they have a small cooldown afterwards. Others have a cast time where basically the, the, the cooldown is on the front end, so it takes time to cast it. During that time, a lot of them can be interrupted. Uh, that'll be bigger spells like a fireball or a corpse explosion or summon elementals or roots, things like that. Those can be interrupted on the front end, but uh, don't have a cooldown time on the back end. If you look at the trees for magic, you'll notice that, uh, here we go, tier three and above spells have reagents listed. So Fireball uses Black Pearl, Mandrake Root, and Sulfurous Ash. Because of the short duration of these uh, play cycles that we're doing right now, we are still not requiring reagents. We have not decided if we're going to require them long term. For these though, these play sessions though, they're going to be uh, extra penalties if you don't have them, which will be extra mana, uh, I believe extra cooldown time as well. So you will want to have these, and I keep saying mana, but mana focus uh, interchangeable. So you'll want to have uh, the reagents if you're going to be doing something challenging. If you're just messing around, then don't worry about it. Uh, you will burn through your focus. I, I've found that many times when I've gone into PvP and not realized why I was getting killed. Let's see, what other elements do we have to talk about here? Uh, mentioned the alternate swapping. We looked at the lock, so for the lock, just so people can see what it looks like. Here's what it looks like if you have the use only lock to glyphs button click. It just gives you a whole list of all the buttons and you can place them just like uh, any any uh, other MMO that's, uh, that's out there. Should be something that people are familiar with. Uh, right now, I think one of those things not many people know is right now you can actually rename your glyphs or your decks. We need to have a better UI for this, but you can just click up the name top and uh, there we go. Rename that one. And now it shows up here. One of the things that might be a little confusing, and hopefully we'll get this patch before we go live, but if not, uh, we have. You have slots for six decks, and they are all filled out to start with. You can delete any deck but the auto deck, so you'll probably want to delete, pick one and delete it, and build your own deck. And just to see how that's done, I just deleted it, rebuilding it. Uh, fun demo deck. There we go. You can change how what the hand size is. That is also something that you can control through focus. You can, by buying more abilities in, uh, in higher consciousness, it will increase the max number of cards you can have in your hand. That's how many buttons you have down at the bottom. Uh, other things in here increase how quickly you cast, which is your draw speed. This is having it on fastest is actually the most challenging. The cards come out quickly, and then the other one is the discard speed. If you have this on fastest, you will deal out cards really fast, and also they will vanish really fast. You really have to pay attention to things out there. Let's see. You can use current equipment. This is looks like I've got a wand out in this, and I'll make a deck to match up with that wand. Uh, as you look over here, you see that it shows, for instance, on my fireball, zero of three. That is, I have three levels in it, and none in this current deck that's selected. So as you can see, as I drag these over, actually is increasing the number in there, and it's now I've got three of three. Skills that are red over on the left-hand side are generally attack skills, active skills. If they're gray, those are passives or innates that have just abilities are always helping the character, always doing something. Blue spells are uh, non-combat spells that can be used in combat, but they're not attack spells. So, for instance, uh, summon elementals or maybe uh, like light spells, enlighten. So let's see what other things do I want to put in there. There's quite a few active spells or skills in armor categories. I'm going to let's see, death ray is a uh, Nope, I don't have any points in death ray. I'm going to go ahead and drop some skills just so I can have some freed up so I can uh, show how some things work. Get rid of all those guys. Okay, now I've got some free skill points. 
Uh, for right now, we just have to you have to have one level and skills above any given skill. So I can't get to tier two until I have one and all the tier one, or until I have one of the skills that lead to it. Since I'm going to be showing off a few things here, let me get four of these guys. Do some fire bolts. You can see down at the bottom, uh, I've got 10 of 20. It's shown me plus 10 slugs. We now have context uh, sensitive stuff, so it'll show you you have 10 slugs added because minimum deck size. So slugs will basically be dead cards that are dealt out if you do not have enough cards in your hand or if you're using equipment that adds, adds slugs to it. So for instance, heavy armor uh, generally adds quite a few slugs that you can reduce through skill use. Let's see, I need to get 10 more items in here. Always a good idea to have a few heal spells. Gust is always a fun one. Lightning Bolt, which I'm going to take, but I probably won't use much because I don't have the reagents for it, which means it will cost a lot. I'm going to increase the deck size just because it will help me demo some stuff. You can see now that I've raised that skill up to 5, I now have a hand size of 9 available. Uh, very slow and fast, so that seems good. Uh, we still have a lot of empty trees where that just, as always, we continue to add things every release. If you look at the list of things for this release, we got quite a few things in for this release. Just didn't have time to get too many more skills and we'll try and finish out a few more trees in the next few releases. We'll go with a couple of roots in there too. I'm also going to lock a root spell. And actually I'm going to add one more to Idetic Memory. So I can add, oh, I'll add one over there so I can lock a second spell. All right, so there's my fun demo deck. So now I can show off a few more. Oh, and I need to equip that. And I'll make lock casters my, oh, I'll go that way. Right, there we go, here's my ultimate. All right, so now if I pull out, pull out my deck, you'll see down the bottom there it's dealing out my the cards some of the cards I just selected you can also see the grayed out that means I just don't have uh, a valid or a valid target for them. fireball is always valid because it's you target a spot which is uh, somewhat inconvenient it takes a little more effort but it's uh, really nice because you can hit people who are around corners or you know behind things. You can go shoot right up to them. You don't have to actually have them targeted or have line of sight on them. And let's see, what's up next? Uh, when you swap a deck, which you can do through the X key by default, which you can also remap to any key you want to, you'll notice that my focus goes down by half. And that is half of my current focus, not half of my total focus. Ooh, looks like I had some exciting lack of armor uh, in that other one. So another thing to point out now is notice how some abilities have green on them. As if you start dragging them, it will highlight the things that you combine with as green. So you can see I combined the uh, fire bolt and the death ray and made a fiery decay, which is a new card. It, it will go away as, on its own over time, so don't think it's there permanently. So you need to try and use it whenever you can. Another thing that is doable is if you drag a card, you'll see that it highlighted another copy of the same card. So if I combine that, you can now see that this has a two down the corner. That means it is now powered up. It's uh, pumped up. It will use less focus, do a little more damage, and have a little faster uh, casting time. So that's a good way to save focus if you have a lot of this in there. So another uh, important thing is if you use the R key for those people who want to play keyboard, which I totally do, rather than using the mouse and trying to play through the uh, mouse interface where you're actually dragging, if you hit R and then hit the card number and the other card number, it will combine them. So two 
six. And then R six seven. R five seven. So now I've got a level four firebolt if I were heading someone who's actually done it. Alright, and unfortunately it looks like the sun is setting on us, for those who don't know uh, too much about the game. The time of day actually matters in the game, it gets dark at night, which is great for roleplaying and great for many things, but not so great for uh, demoing the game, because it's going to get really dark, so I'm going to take a quick run outside. Uh, actually, I think I'll stop here for the night, and I'm going to pause for a while on the videotaping. And I will be back in a few minutes, as soon as the day comes out. And as I mentioned, the cycle is about an hour long. So see you guys in about 20 minutes once uh, night passes. All right, now the sun is coming up in the game. So I will get back to doing a little demo. Troll Hunter has waited with me. I will head out to the overworld, and we can check to see, uh, watch the sunrise out there, maybe while I talk about it a little bit. Or a few more features that we've added. Alright, let's see. Oh look, we can watch the sunrise and I'll talk about a few things. Uh, so, one thing that's important to note here is, hey look, there's a little guy running down there. So we switched the overworld to be a playable space. We'll continue to add more functionality to it. We did not switch out a lot of the graphics. There's been a few things switched out uh, in the overworld. But while we wait for the sun to rise a little bit, and we watch the glorious sunrise, uh, let me tell you about a few other things went in that will not be uh, easily uh, demonstrable in this uh, uh, the demo that I'm going to be doing for you guys. So one thing is the aggro system. Up until now, we've had an AI system, but it didn't really have a logical aggro system. It was if it got angry at you and attacked the first person got angry at until they died. So there's now actually an aggro system that uses kind of the similar rules to other games where things you do add uh, taunts, so there's some skills and abilities that use that generate different amounts of taunts, so some you know, people can actually tank now and they can try to pull aggro off of people. Uh, and casters that are uh, silly casters will be able to pull aggro off of the tanks. Uh, healing also adds aggro to things, so you can upset things through, through healing them. So. Anyways, we've got some rules in there now that we will continue to polish on. Uh, we also added uh, some castellaries to Arteris, uh, updated the Oracle Confirmary, Confirmatory, sorry, uh, and it's also an Arteris. We added several new zones, including uh, one by one of our new designers, Vertos Pass. He also reworked the plane zones and the road zones that were so horrible in the game. So I'll go show off one of those scenes here in a second. You can see the new versions of those. Uh, there's a new challenge dungeon that's out there that is actually for us, for metrics, proving out things. So we can try and figure out what people actually can take, what methods they use to get around, you know, what exploits, what problems they're trying to, uh, to take advantage of in AIs or game systems. And let's see, we did remove some city scenes, as I mentioned, just so we can try and keep people tied closer together. Let's see. Uh, lots of skill work was done in terms of we setting aggro cost and also how much the skills cost. Walking around to here, you'll see now at the bottom, you'll actually see what scene you will be entering into if you if you go into a scene. We still are not dragging people into scenes, which is in the real game, that's how things work. We just, again, with these short weekends, we hate forcing uh, pain moments on people that we'd normally be okay with forcing on you if you were going to be playing for you know, months at a time rather than three days and uh, three days with multiple downtowns, down, down time so we can uh, patch up things. So I'll go into this scene. Uh, as I mentioned, we did do quite a bit of work to optimize the loading. It's more obvious in the, the adventure scenes rather than in the, uh, the town scenes. So I don't have a before and after picture. I think we posted one a while back. But this is one of the new Plains Road scenes that before was, uh, I would call it borderline hideous. 
Uh, I pretty much insisted we redo them because whenever people would uh, rag on the game and say how bad the graphics were, they were always posting pictures of the plain scenes. Uh, so just getting it back up to a more you know, polished uh, game experience. Much better, we're much closer to it. And this was from our uh, new, one of our new designers. As uh, I think I might have mentioned, I know it's in the notes, that uh, you can now tab target non-aggro things, things are not uh, attacking you. So you can now attack uh, target bunny rabbits much easier. Here's your bunny rabbit if you want to kill him. Die bunny. Now I can actually show off one of the uh, combo things. Yeah, take that bunny. Alright. So anyways, this is one of the new scenes. Oh, the bunny's burning pretty well. The bunny's burnt so well. Quite flammable. Uh, this is one of the new scenes. I'm going to head back out to the overworld. And head on up to Owl's Head. And we'll look at some stuff there. We're running, we're running, we're running. And heading on up, we added back in a few more cities because people were screaming about how few cities we had. And you can see the sun is coming up a little bit more every time. Uh, we still need to do quite a bit more work on load times for cities. We know what the issues are, and it's just how we load player houses. It's a lot of content that is uh, dynamic. Uh, it's really just how we send the houses down. So we'll continue working on that over time. But just didn't have time to get much done for it for this release. Uh, soon. We'll get there. And now we're finally in Dow's Head. Uh, there was a lot of visual polish when this released as well, but it's kind of getting to the point where uh, things aren't as dramatic. There's, this was more of a release for some more camera effects and some more lighting passes and bloom and those type elements. Some more particle effect tuning. Uh, Midge the cat. You'll notice the the uh, teleporter here uh, will change with the time of day. We've actually shortened it from what it'll be in the game, just in the real game, so uh, it's a little more convenient. But it looks like it's going to the place I don't want to be right now. So I'm going to use my magical video editing abilities and I'm going to go and zone over to uh, one of the new scenes. All right, I've used my GM powers to teleport me over to the new scene without having to wait for the uh, the teleporter to take us here. Uh, you'll see that the tour guide is here, so this will be on part of your guided tour of the of this release. If you want to uh, join in completing the quest, which will give you the permanent reward uh, tied to your account, won't get wiped. Uh, the permanent reward that will uh, give you something the game actually releases for the R10 achievement. So this is one of our new scenes, uh, Vertos Pass. This is still under works, but we went ahead and released it. Uh, I believe this is going to be a control point type scene that will actually have a lot of uh, back and forth stuff. is actually quite a bit more challenging than many of the other scenes, scenes that are PvE. And I'm going to go ahead and sneak by Mr. Spider here. 
hopefully sneak by that spider. And heading on into the level. Uh, some of the other things went in for this release uh, that I won't be showing off. I think uh, hopefully people can find them. We added uh, triggers that can be targeted so you can clip switches with uh, arrows and with some spells. Uh, that's uh, for those who are old Ultima fans, you'll recognize that functionality. Uh, but it also opens up a lot of options for us in terms of what we can do with triggers and where we can put things and uh, traps and puzzles that we can have in the game. Uh, there's profanity filters in there for anybody who minds uh, profanity. Uh, also, if you right-click on people, you'll now see there's a dual option. I probably should have put big exclamation marks around that when I said it, but uh, since I know a lot of people have been wanting that, but that's in there. You can thank uh, one and only for that. Uh, we, let's see, well, lots of other little things. You'll have to read the full release notes to uh, get an idea of what's actually new in there if you really want to go check all the features. But uh, again, we've been busy this release. And uh, there's also, I don't know if I mentioned already, but there's a challenge dungeon that's purely for us uh, debugging in levels. I think I did mention that. Let's see. I am just going to run madly through this scene and see if I can survive. Just uh, not stopping at all. Come on, guys. Hopefully, not aggro these guys. And to keep up the tradition, my wife has called me while I'm making the video, but this time I did remember to turn off my uh, ringer. I feel fairly fuzzy. And let's see how far I can get. And not too far. Uh, I, of course, died on purpose there so I can show off another new feature that we got in, which is the death effect. As you can see, we've got the green, and it actually kind of combines with the, uh, the snow and particle effects there, but there's the gray and reduced contrast in the screen, and then also the uh, dark smoke effect from the edges. The full death system I think we're going to put in for R11, uh, but you'll again, you'll have to check the list to see what things we're actually going to be pushing out for that, uh, so don't lower your me. Uh, but this is part of the visuals for it. We'll probably tune that up a little bit too to make it a little more dark and daunting. But for this release, for convenience, again, we're making it easy on you guys and you just respawn wherever you were, wherever you died. All right, let's can give these guys a fight. Yeah. Break line of sight with that guy. Throw a little fireball action over there. R5-6, okay. There's a level 3 firebolt going on. Boom. And I died. Alright, well, again, this scene is uh, pretty challenging, so you should probably bring some uh, friends to help you out with it. Uh, hopefully I covered enough things here to help you out. If you watch Release 8 video, you'll probably see a few things I didn't cover in here, in terms of combat specifics. Uh, make sure and go try some PvP if you actually want to see some players who know what they're doing. Uh, as usual, I expect the island will be quite uh, popular and challenging, the PvP island. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and see you in-game.